Hello, and you're very, very welcome to the Nutshell. It's the JMAC podcast, and of course, this podcast is brought to you by orgarich.com. Using the code JMAC podcast to get 15% off on their website. Lots of new gear dropped for Christmas, so get in touch with the guys. And today, I'm joined by former Arma and Cross McGlenn legend, uh, John McAdee, to talk about his career, uh, Cross McGlenn season, and all about a crack and a bit of banter for the next while. So, I suppose, John, how are you keeping? Yeah, John, very good. Um, Tip top form. I haven't been doing an awful lot of exercise, mind you, but uh, uh, healthy and well. Thanks be to God. Good stuff. Good stuff, John. So uh, before we get into it, I suppose I can I can list through these. Um, 14 Arma club titles for Cross and Glen, 8 Ulster titles, 5 All-Ireland titles, and then for the County of Arma, 6 Ulster titles, 1 All-Ireland and 1 National League. Um, John, where did it all go wrong? <laughs> I got old, John. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, I was lucky. Uh, I came at a good time. You know, a, a lot of things happen in life because you're um, you're very fortunate, you know, and, and, and without that bit of luck, uh, we've been born into a county that had, uh, you know, a lot of good footballers at the same time. They all had a, had a good passion and drive for it. You had great guys around you, people committed to the, you know, to making you the best that you can. A family who were really, really supportive, you know, uh, you know, in terms of my mum mom and dad and siblings and, you know, even, you know, you know, you, you grow up and you get married uh, and, and my growing ups, maybe an understatement, yeah, you, you get older and you, and you, and, and, and you get married and, and uh, you know, when you have a wife that's very supportive as well, it, it makes life an awful lot easier. Uh, so you go out and, you, and you, you, you can be as selfish as you want and be as driven as you want and, and you're just fortunate things happen you know uh, you're given the you're given the opportunity and it's up to yourself then to just to try and take that you know and that's that's just seems to be the way it sort of panned out nothing too scientific at all yeah yeah and obviously an unbelievable group of footballers suppose at the time as well i suppose we, we can touch on to that in a few minutes john i suppose uh, how's life with yourself obviously you're applying your trade uh, down in monaghan at the minute in club management so i suppose how are you how are you supposed to enjoy? You're obviously yeah, you're you're done a good few years playing, but I suppose how are you enjoying that aspect of things now, uh, coaching and managing? Yeah, do uh, you know what I love it? Uh, I've been at it now a long time actually, called maybe ten or eleven years. This stage, I was I was coaching before I quit playing football. My last year, I was actually uh, I, I was in coaching and uh, I spent a, a stint in, in with Colville and and we won a county title in Colville and got an Ulster final and just were pipped at the post in it. Uh, you know, and then I was with Cross Midland for a couple of years, and and we were, we won a couple of county titles, and and won an Ulster title actually as well that year, and we're beaten by, I think it was Castle Bar maybe in a, in a, in our Ireland semi, and then, uh, I was four years in Clontibbert, and and again very lucky that we managed to win a county title, uh, down in Clontibbert as well, and uh, you know, and I have to, I have to say that uh, I have I have great memories of that club. There, are, you know, John, you talk about, you know. Great Gales, uh, there are men down there, and and they embarrass you. The men tend to put into the club. The likes of Conor McManus's dad, uh, you know, the likes of Aidan Woods and Colin Gormley and um, Killian Lavelle's dad, Alla. Uh, they're just the men. They never leave the club. They literally never go home. They spend their life um, every minute of the, that the possible can around clubs on. And uh, you can see, <clears throat> I, I drew great parallels with my own club, Cross Glen, because we have the same. We have people who are just committed to the club. And But you can see how clubs that are successful, uh, it's not just about the player, it's about the culture and the atmosphere and the, the, the people of that club that makes them successful. And when they get their chance in a county title, which can I can tell you, if you're in a county final of Contibbert, you'll have to do very well to beat them because that pedigree is it's born in them and the, and the real passion was there to win and uh, so I love my four years down there so I did uh, I took a year out last year and then this year I'm um, going to play my trade with uh, Ennis Keane another modern club uh, and you know I haven't actually I haven't started with them I won't be starting out till the new year but I, I, I know the facilities and I've met the people and the exact same things up there it's just remarkable that uh, and you only see this when you go around other clubs every club is the same they are wonderful people Mm. Uh, you know they're committed to 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 the GEA and they're through through Gales, um, and uh, as I say, that's I think that's one of the things that I probably didn't know 
uh, so much about because you, 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 you're so insular when you're, you know, you're in cross with anybody with your own club or not just cross with anybody, John, I suppose, you, you become so insular, you just think that you're, you're close brilliant and there's nobody like you. And actually, in fact, there are so many close brilliant. There are so many people committed to these things and so many people do as much and more than you do with, with, with their own club. And it's, it, it's, it's a wonderful expression of Irish culture and Irish life and, and something that I think we should, we should, we should celebrate more. You know, I, I think we sort of, we, we, we lose sight of the fact that the club is the bedrock of the GA and those people are the thing that keeps the, thick, the thing ticking thick thick over. Um, and, you know, because the focus is on inter-county football so much, I think we've lost that a wee bit uh, and to, to, to our, well, to my disappointment, I think. Mm, yeah, yeah, I know the club, I suppose, is where it starts and begins, but that's obviously a very good point that most clubs are the same and very welcome, I suppose, John. I suppose, what's the so standard like down in Monaghan there? Like, you know, obviously the championship structure, you suppose you get a few bites of the apple, um, different to Cavan up here, you get a few bites of the apple, but, you know, what's, I suppose, the cut trust like down there? Well, the top teams are very good. You know, Ballet Bay came out of Monaghan this year and beat Cross and Glen um, in, 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 the, in the Ulster Championship and uh, a few years ago, Contribor came out and beat Cross and Glen in the Ulster Championship. Uh, they haven't won an Ulster title. Um, no Monaghan team has won an Ulster title in quite a while. Uh, and that's something I'm sure, you know, that maybe Scott's team might regret not having won a couple of titles. We beat them actually in, in, the, in, a, in an Ulster Championship final, which was a cracking game uh, only a few years ago. But... Um, the standard's good, you know, and but interestingly, the standard across even intermediate and juniors very strong. You look at Don Mind the year they've come out and they're progressing really well in Ulster in the intermediate championship. Um and you know, you've seen junior teams coming out of Monaghan and doing really well as well. Uh which is which t- it's different than what Arma Arma was you know, traditionally strong at senior club level and the junior intermediate teams weren't as strong. Uh there's certainly a bigger focus on all clubs in, in, in Monaghan and I suppose the standard typically is, is better. Now, you go and look at the football on a week-by-week basis, you mightn't think that looking outside in, but when you go and play them, you realise how good they can be, you know. Um, I think they're, they're probably, uh, as a county, not not a county grade, but, you know, clubs within a county, I think they still have a bit of work to do in terms of playing catch-up on the, on the top teams from a uh, starting conditioning perspective and a general, you know, um, the physique uh, aspect of it. But they're definitely, they're definitely very committed and they're very talented couplers. Mm, yeah, it looks like that. It looks like that, I suppose, Johnny. And obviously, we've we seen a few weeks ago, obviously, across McGlenn just coming up short against uh, Bally Bay in the Ulster Club Championship. So we, me and you were kind of briefly talking about it off air. I suppose, what was the I suppose thoughts coming away from that uh, game, John? And obviously, you're kind of remarking that this is a very young Cross Glen team. You know, don't <laughs> don't write them off yet, um, as we've seen from great Cross Glen teams over the years, John. But I suppose coming away from the game, what was the initial thoughts? Yeah, well, we weren't overly disappointed uh, of getting big. I think our, our focus the year was winning the county title. Um, I think there was a perception more broadly across Ulster that Cross is going to be competitive in Ulster because of the historical you know, baggage that, that we bring to the table. However, this is an entirely new bunch of lads, and the majority of them are very, very young. Um, so getting the monkey off the back and winning the county title was really important for them. And I think they just need to learn from that experience. Balabé, as I mentioned, are a strong side. Uh, they've been a very forceful side in Monon for eight or 10 years there. They just haven't won as many titles to reflect that position. Uh, so we knew that they were going to be competitive and to be fair on the day they were just a much better side. Cross didn't play well. Um, but as you say, you wouldn't write them off. There was there was five, six maybe of, of them lads played in on the 19 final a fortnight later. Uh, and we won the on the 19 championship in Armagh by 25 points. It was 31 points. Uh, it was five goals and 16 points I think. To, um, five, to five points, you know, but that's, it goes to show you those, those lads are, they're, they're talented and, and uh, only three out of the six fellas actually were starters on the senior team. They're, they're really good. They're really good lads. And I think there's serious potential in that squad. Um, but you have to give them a chance. John, you Christ, you can't. Nowadays it's, di- it's different than when we played. Like when we came up in the senior grade, uh, you know, I, I might have been, I might have been 19 years of age, whenever uh, I won my first All Ireland. Was I? Yeah, I think it was 19 years of age. You know, when I was 20 years of age, I was captain of the team. 
uh, like those type of things couldn't happen nowadays because the physique, the conditioning, the the, the fact that did maybe you find that a pressure being captain at such a young age, or did you thrive on that? No, it's now it's not a pressure on cross because you have you know there's so many other people who are, who are there in leadership roles. Um, that's that sort of collective leadership approach is the way across operate. It's just not one man leading team. You know you had Donald Murta, you had Martin Calliff, you had you know um, Francie Bellia and Andy Cunningham went on to manage. He's managing cross this year. He he, he was a real leader. You had um, <coughs> you, you know Cal Short and Ashton Conville. You had Tony and myself. Uh, Gavin Comiskey, you just had so many people who had leadership traits and 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 were vocal and uh, you know when the chips were down somebody else all stood up Jim Conville as I mentioned beforehand as well um, so no it wasn't it it, it, it wasn't a, it wasn't a pressure but that was different you know God football 20 years ago was different than football nowadays uh, and you're coming out now at 18 years of age and that f that physical prowess that's in the senior and inter-county footballer now wasn't there back then. We were big and strong, but by comparison, you know, you're being compared against, you know, builders and uh, get and, and farmers and, uh, you know, guys in the construction industry who were hardy and tough as nails, but they didn't come with that physical strength, that physical presence on the field. And uh, surely if they hit you, they'd hurt you. But that, that tower base wasn't there the same way it is now. Um, that's probably what prevents these guys making breakthrough appearances. You know, Clifford, for example, Clifford is, is an absolute genius, but he's an absolute monster. Um, big, strong, physically powerful. He, he was that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he started with 17. So the transition in the senior grade was easy and natural for him. Rain O'Neill, the same uh, for him. Uh, but not everybody's like that. Yeah, yeah, no, good point, good point. I suppose, obviously, like the the the, the players on the Cross McGlen team, and obviously, you know, Jamie, Jamie came back this year, and obviously, we're talking about the likes of Keem, Convalar, and Karen, and still going strong. And he got what he won the seventeenth Armagh County title this year, and obviously, we know how good Ray O'Neill is. So, there is lots of talent there, John. It just, I suppose, next year, obviously, you know, it, it'll be um, it'll be all going to business again next year, just to I suppose get your hands back and obviously the Armagh title, and obviously, you know, work hard to try again. Uh, make a bit of a journey, obviously, once again next year. Yeah, cross me down. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's there's plenty of talent in cross me down. You know, Kane, Kane's probably case in point. He was small and light, and he spent a couple of years developing himself physically, and it, yeah, he had an outstanding year for Armagh this year. Kane McConville. Uh, sorry, an outstanding year for cross me down this year, uh, and we're hoping that that'll catapult him into the next stage of of, of getting his place in the Armagh squad. But yeah, there's other guys there, like you know, Jamie's Jamie's been around quite a few years, as has Aaron. Uh, they have, they're incredibly skillful. They have a lot to bring to the table. They have a lot of experience to draw on. So I would like to think that they're going to be there for at least for another year, if not longer. You know, both of them look after themselves really well. Aaron in particular, like you, you look at Aaron even eating a sweet or a biscuit. I sit beside Aaron at training just in, just to be, just in case he doesn't. You know, I I would eat all the biscuits and sweets for him. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's and that's that's the way they are. They're commit. They're entirely committed to to being the best that they can be and. It's, it's, I suppose we're talking about it and, and, and it might sound different, but it's not, not it's, it's just the way they are. It's, it, they don't say it anything different than, than that's, you know, that's part of the makeup. That's the hobby. That's their, that's their DNA. It's, they get up in the morning and go to the gym because that's what they do. It's not, it's not seen as an additional chore. It's, it's part of their, their hobby, the hobby, you know. Mm, yeah, I suppose. So there's so many kind of, playing kind of players you can go through, but in fairness, like as you were rightly saying there, but Aaron Karen and keeping himself in such good condition and, I think RT showed a lovely moment after the game. He was, was quite maybe emotional with his kids and his wife after the game and just goes to show it means more the whole time. But fair play to him keeping himself in such good nick and he was running up and down the field, you know, for his age to be playing at such a high level, John. It's it's a real testament to the man. Well, like you think of it, was it must have been 2005. He was maybe young player of the year. He was, yeah. Christ, that's that's 17 years ago. Yeah. You know, and he's still performing. Now, that's an incredible... Uh, statistic for any man. There's very, very few who who, who can do that, you know. Um, and yeah, it meant you know. <clears throat> I don't think his 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 emotional outpouring and feel was anything other than frustration, maybe at not playing so well and having another chance. And the older you get, the, you know, the more you the more you the value every chance that you get of playing in Ulster. And maybe he maybe felt himself that he didn't take the opportunity as much as he would want to have. Uh, but um, you know. 
he, he's committed and I think he'll be there for another year at least. Yeah, yeah, no, top class athlete, a top class athlete, and I suppose kind of kind of looking on from the game, like you know, like it was, it was like the air crier, I suppose, the, after the emotion after the game, like amongst supporters, like you know, we'll go again next year, and obviously you have a new management team as well. So, I suppose, uh, John, look, like really looking into it, you know, hope springs eternal. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've always pointed internally in, in the management team, and Stephen has done a marvelous job. He, in the three years he was there, he's had two county finals, and then won the third county final. Uh, and as I say, he, he, he managed the team to win on the 19 championship the year. So, you know, he's got a good legacy there. Uh, he transitioned from old team to a new team. Uh, and with Anthony coming in, he's a former player. Uh, you know, he'll build on that. He knows the philosophy. He knows the culture within the club. Um, he knows what the, the ethos is. And, and, and all he has to do is, is provide a structure and a routine and, and get the boys going again. And... Uh, you know, they'll build on it from last year. There's no doubt about it. The cross team aren't a team that will uh, like one hit wonders. They've proven that already. They've been consistent in the last three years and they just want to get better and better. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And I suppose, obviously, anyone that's uh, got to watch the documentary, I've, I've obviously remarked to John Mort in the past and Paul Herity about the Cross McGlynn documentary that was released back in 2016 that Thomas Newlock. Went down and done, John. It's on YouTube for anyone to get their eyes on. I think I've watched it personally about five or six times. I just love it. I, lo- I love all them kind of GA close up documentaries. Yeah. Obviously, you and Ushin played a star star role in it, I suppose, John. And it, it really showed history and tradition of Cross McGlynn and the troubles in the past. So I suppose <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a special kind of show for the club. And um, it just goes to show football meant everything to you. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I tend to forget about those type of things because you never look like looking at yourself on TV. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I suppose it's, it, it captured a moment in, in, in time, John, and um, you know, it, it, it helped us to reflect even on, on where we came from and, and the challenges we've had over the years. And, and it hasn't been easy, um, you know. And, and and I suppose we could spend a whole show talking about the troubles and the and the, and the impact on the past, but. Um, what what was nice about it was that it kind of was raw. Thomas was there, and you know we didn't we didn't fake it to make it. We just just had the conversations, and he tried to pick things up in the background. He tried to uh, <coughs> he, he tried to keep it as subtle as as it possibly could be. The camera that is, you know, uh, and uh, yeah, it proved it proved to be a good success. So we were, we were pleased the bit turned out. Mm-hmm, absolutely, I suppose managing Cross McGlynn in 2016, John, with um, with Oshin, obviously your your first uh, stint with Cross McGlynn as a coaching point of view, and I suppose looking after the lads was what was the experience like itself. Obviously getting to the All Ireland semi final that time against Castlebar, and maybe since maybe 2016, Cross McGlynn maybe didn't get back. I suppose to them levels, but, but what was the experience like itself managing the team? Yeah, it was great. Listen, when you when you play for Cross, there's an expectation, and you're going to manage them at some point. So you have to do it. Um, we we came in on the back. I think um, my brother Tony and and Gareth Neil was there for a few years, up to about 2012, 13, I think, uh, and they were incredibly successful. Maybe got the two learning finals and beaten in a semi final <clears throat> in the third, going for three in a row. Uh, and uh, and then I think Donald Martin might actually come back and done a stint, and then Ashley and I, I suppose, we had retired. So. Uh, you know, as I say, you just you're asked to do these things and and you do them, and you know it's as much a learning curve for us uh, as 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 it is an opportunity for us to share our experience with the players. Like, you know, <clears throat> just because you 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 play at a reasonable level doesn't automatically make you a, a good manager. And, and we you know we've no airs and graces about ourselves. We we know that uh, there are things we did well. There's things we didn't do so well. And um, uh, as I say, we've learned an awful lot from that experience. Uh, we hope that we give as much as we could to the club mm. uh, as managers. And, uh, you know, uh, I suppose you, you can see that Oshin has gone on now and he's going into an intercounty career as, as a manager <coughs> with Wicklow and we wish him good luck with that. Uh, uh, and obviously I'm still sort of tipping about. So it hasn't all been bad. Uh, we, mm. You know, we still seem to we still seem to be doing all right from it. So we're, you know, so far so good. 
Mm, brilliant stuff and I suppose I was kind of remarking to uh, uh, John and Paul that like, since maybe 2016 obviously <clears throat> across Ireland didn't get uh, maybe two like maybe on all our own semis have had maybe success in, in our map do you maybe since that 2016 uh, team John what would you maybe put that down to maybe maybe losing a few heads or maybe a few people around the dressing room or I suppose maybe these things happen trans- transitions of teams I suppose well if you think about it we had from 1996 2016 what is that there's 20 odd years uh, of recurrent success you know and, and it's it's very hard to keep it going because <clears throat> i suppose if you have a good group crop of players life's easy and we we had two or three good crops of players coming through those years and sooner or later those crops sort of fade away you know boys get older boys uh you know married kids different priorities um uh, some of the guys want to go travel, you know, whatever else it might be. And that's fine. You know, people have to live their lives as well. This is a, it's a voluntary organisation. <clears throat> um, you know, it's a voluntary game. Nobody's paid to do this. So <clears throat> it's important that, that that uh, you know, when you're there, you give your best. And then when your time's up, your time's up. And and I suppose, you know, after that crop of lads went through in 2010, 11, 12, a good number of those stayed on for four or five more years and, and we did pick up another uh, Ulster title in, what was that, 15, 16. Um, but they, they too got older, you know, and, and and those guys sort of started to fade away. Like Franny Handy was one of those players who was just unique. He didn't have to train very hard. He was incredibly quick, uh, you know, just naturally gifted, naturally talented. Um, <clears throat> and he, he probably had the shortest career ever and, and probably the most successful career ever. He might have played four or five years and two all Ireland titles and, you know, four or five all, uh, county titles and a couple of stuff, you know, just like that. And then he disappeared again. And you might never see somebody like that ever again. He just, that's it, you know. Uh, but without him and players like that, you just don't have that wee extra bit of ingre- the ingredient needed just to get across the line. Mm. Uh, and as I say, you, know, you get older, you get heavier, you, you get maybe your your interest starts to wane or, or it goes in a different direction. And that's just natural attrition, isn't it? You know, that's just the way teams go. Now, we have good crops of fellas coming through and we've always managed as a club to pick two or three guys out of minor grade and, and feed them into the senior grade, mm-hmm. um, which is grand until you lose a crop of four or five seniors and then you're starting to play catch up. Uh, yeah. And, and, and uh, like the current squad, are outside of Aaron Kiernan uh, and Jamie, they're entirely new. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Entirely new. And yeah. they've managed to come through here and win a county title. And uh, John, you compare them to every other club in the country. Not every other club in the country can pull together a whole bunch of new lads and win a county title. And um, that has been achieved by those lads. So they can take great pride in what they've achieved um, on their own, um, off their own bat, you know. Uh, and that, that's why I say we have a chance now to build on that and develop that. So we have, with the with the support structure and the ethos and the culture and everything that's in Cross Glen, that'll bring them on again, you know. Mm, absolutely. And I suppose kind of reverting back to the documentary, John, um, like throughout it, obviously it was very touching. It was probably very heart- heartfelt and it just goes to show football really is everything down there. And that's probably why years were so uh, successful over the years. I suppose, John, it was really intimate, really stuff. And um, it, it gave an insight to the whole um, dressing room. It just goes to show the GA. It's powerful, and obviously Oshin's mom, just such a special lady down there too, John. So it uh, really means more to you down there. Yeah, and, and you know she she she's still at every match, um, you know, and she's still there with all the cronies, all the, the same people are at the matches every week. Uh, the ones that go to the senior match also go to on the twenty on the nineteen match. They go to the on the eight match. I have a, I have a young fella at um, or not only it's thirteen. And, uh, you know, you see the people peeping over the fence, Margaret McShane, uh, God bless her, uh, you know, it's only after the recent heart surgery. And, uh, like, one of the first things she did when she got back on her feet was come up to the football pitch to look and see what was going on. And you see her laying over the fence looking at these on the 13 year olds, and you think, God, Margaret, you should be in the house. Mm-hmm. Uh, why aren't you at home looking after yourself? But she wants to be out seeing what the next future generation is coming along. And, you know, so the likes of Margaret McConville, uh, you know, as I say, who who is is is, you know, she's a, she's a good age now. Uh, she has been an, an incredible servant to that club, and not just you know producing some fine young men and women who who have served both at, on the field and also in committees. She's given her own time and her own family's time to that sort of thing, and and she's been an inspiration to us all. Um, 
you know, so it's lovely. It's lovely. We we are very proud of the fact that we have Margaret and Margaret McShane and, you know, many other people like them and uh, the Tim Gregory's of this world and, and, and the Eddie Cuses, people and the Jean Hannity, the Jean Duffy's and the Jean Hannity's and, you know, there's so many people. Um, and, you know, Wicked Jean Cuse, you could list them forever and ever and ever. Uh, but we have memories of them growing up as kids, supporting us, praising us, encouraging us. Uh, when I was kicking football at the start of my career, at the end of my career, they were doing the exact same thing. And now that I'm finished and I'm happening out with the coaching world, they support me in the exact same way, John. And, you know, um, it's 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 the memories that I don't even know that they know what they've done. You know, I don't I don't know that they even realise the impact they've had on people like me and maybe Tony and Oshin and, and, and Francie and everybody else. But uh, like they'll never be forgotten. In our minds, they've been they've been really important to us as, as we've as we've grown and matured as, as as individuals because it was that confidence that they instilled in us and enabled us to you know even have confidence to go out and uh, you know into the big bad world at a time whenever life was difficult it wasn't easy around cross the at the time mm. at the army and everything else but even just to you know have the confidence to go into Belfast university to, you know to meet new people to get on in their career and all this stuff it all starts whenever you're coaching them kids and you're developing them as individuals and it's one of the you know it's a key philosophy in our club we we, we grow people uh, and we prepare people for senior life for 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 senior football we don't we don't we don't develop footballers to win eight-year-old matches or ten-year-old matches or 13-year-old matches if they do great but if they don't it's not the end of the world you know Mm, absolutely, I suppose, obviously, John. It's, it is remarkable stuff, and I suppose it, like even when you were managing the team with uh, Oshin and like the week leading into a championship game, everyone's just chomping at the bit, the intensity, the drive, the hunger, and it just it, it, you, you, you're nearly in the dressing room yourself in the documentary. Like it's it's great viewing, but like just that intensity, the raw heat of, the heat of battle. It's um you don't want to be any, anywhere else other than champion championship week in them years you're, you're managing that team. I'm playing. Hi, and you miss it. Uh, we like we we left like even the county football. Uh, there was a guy we played with called Marty Toy, fabulous footballer from from Mary. I played for years, great arm ball servant, and I remember meeting him one day at St Pool and I seen how his life, and he says he says it's fine. He says, but you miss the camaraderie in the change rooms. You know, it's the one thing you miss that male contact, that male bonding type thing. I mean, you leave that change room. Uh, you know, you lose that. You definitely do. Management helps you to a certain degree. It keeps you in touch with boys. Um, but uh, it's a bit more superficial than when you're a player. When you're a player and you're that bond, it's, there is there is something special about it, you know. Um, um, but but uh, yeah, you drift you drift away from it a wee bit and, and it's, it is a loss. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. You know, it was great stuff. And I suppose, John, kind of touching on to your own person, football playing days with Cross and Glen, obviously you would have got the ball rolling in around 90, 95, and you, you would have finished up in like 2011, as I said, the start, 14 Armagh, Armagh club titles, eight Ulster titles and five All-Ireland titles for yourself, John. And I suppose, obviously, playing with some absolutely remarkable players over the years, probably some of the best club players we've ever seen, John. So what was it all like for you? <laughs> John, it might surprise you to realise uh, I actually don't have great memories. I don't have many memories, not great memories, but I don't have many memories of because a lot of the, the detail I don't remember. <laughs> I have the worst memory for detail. You know, I just, it's kind of nearly like a big blur to me. You sort of yeah. started playing and suddenly then the whole thing was over. It, it's it's really remarkable. And uh, I actually wouldn't need it. If I was to look back, if you were asking me about specific matches, uh, there are some I'll remember, of course, but. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of the things um, pass me by. Yeah, like for example, when we went to matches on a, on a bus, I, I'm not a good traveler for a bus, so I have to. I I probably had down to close my eyes. I sat in a double seat on my own. I lay down and and so crack would have been on, the banter would have happened, and I'd have been laying out comatose in the bus. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, there was a couple of matches where I received concussion. No recollection of the match or, or anything around that, you know, that sort of way. Mm-hmm. But like, um, there are memories. There are things that law stick in your mind. That, you know, setting aside the the losses, there 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 are deep, but there are there are really there were important key matches that we won, that really made a difference. So, Belahi, we played Belahi in the Ulster final, 
and I think actually we drew with them one year and beat them in a replay. Uh, and you know, we can't, you can't underestimate the significance of playing a team where there's history with that team. So Cross and Glenn played Blahi maybe back in '86 or something uh, in a championship match. Um, Blahi not only beat them, they beat them out the gate physically as well as football wise. And then you have the whole history of 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 um, the bog side, uh, you know, the battle of the bog side and all that stuff. Stuff that was, you you may not be too familiar with this whole thing, but you know, in terms of context of the trouble and the start of the troubles and that sort of stuff back in sixty eight, sixty nine. So clubs like Belahi, where there's 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 they're so steeped in the GA and they're so steeped in the you know the significance of the north and how things happen, to go out and play them, and to beat them was was monumental. It was yeah. massive for us, uh, and it, it brought us to a whole different level. Like the same year we were down, and we played Long Rangers mm. uh, in our Lawrence semi final. Imagine beating the Kerry boys, like literally coming from Crossing Lane and playing the Kerry champions. Yeah. And I, something tells me they were Ireland champions the previous year, uh, and we beat them in the semi final. Yeah. Um, and like those are things that money can't buy you, you know, yeah. and the experiences that'll, that'll stand here for all your life. Now, we, we went into an All Ireland final. Uh, and we could have been beaten. We went into our second All Ireland final a few years late, two years later, I think, in 2000, actually, again, Ballina, and they were a ten point better team. They just couldn't take the points, mm-hmm. you know. And 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 we won that game. And it was that character and grit that carried us through. They knew when we got our chance that we would take it. Um, but there were, you know, there were other games that uh, that will stick long in your mind. For all sorts of reasons, and not always the good reasons, you know that sort of way. Mm. Uh, until you get talking to them, so you know we mentioned earlier about Stephen Cairn, and, and Stephen Cairn has a, a, an incredible memory. He's like he's like the Jimmy McGee of GEA as well. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. If I need anything, I'd ring Stephen Cairn and ask him, "Do you remember what happened there?" Today? And he'll tell me what happened. Uh, <clears throat> but if I, if I was sitting talking to, to, to Stephen and, and, and Jim McConville, as it has happened been the case, because I was happy to have done the nineteens there recently, and. and Steve was the manager and Jim was have, was was the coach as well. Uh, and you start talking about old games, it all floods back, mm. you know. And it, it, it's like a, it's like a it's like it's like an injection of of adrenaline because into your system because you start to nearly live the matches again. You remember mm. the hits that you got and the hits that you gave or the the scores and, and you know and and, and the, the the rivalry and camaraderie that you had with the guys. Like, over those years, we went to college and and you know we we formed great relationships with some of those dairy lads. Uh, and I think one of my best friends is a, is, is a fellow from Black Yard Darley, who we very rarely see, but he's still high up on you know my my friends list. If ever I needed somebody, Garrett would always be there. And they're from they're from those those relationships were formed from fighting and playing on the field, and then mm-hmm. meeting up afterwards and socialising or whatever the case is, you know. Uh, and and that's the same that's the same right across. I would say right across Ireland, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, now. At the same time, uh, you know, we we had such a rivalry with Tyrone over the years. Mm. Uh, I I couldn't say because and and we didn't have a lot of, we probably didn't mingle at the same degree either after matches. Grandma and Tyrone were pretty hot rivals, mm. and me personally didn't have that many friendships with the Tyrone guys. So even you know, all these years later, they're probably one of the few counties where we played an awful lot with that mm. I wouldn't have. Somebody that I would pick up phone up and have a crack with, you know that sort of thing, because it's just the way things worked out. But um, no, it was a good year. It was a good. It was a good innings. We did all right. Like you know, we've, uh, we've, we're happy enough with our lot. <laughs> any more space there? Is it, is it full up in the um, middle or cabinet? Is, is there any more much more space for any more senior titles with maybe a modern club? You know, but, but you know, you know, I know this. This might sound after you, but you know, so it's say. You said there we won fourteen county titles. We we won five of Ireland's. So nine out of those fourteen times that we won county titles, I lost the match that year. You yeah. know, so yeah. depending on whether you consider that a success or a failure, uh, and and it could very much depend on what that year was like. There was years where winning the county title was sufficient for us. There was other years where we were really gutted that we didn't win an Ulster title. And there, are, you know, nine nine of those five nine fourteen years that we actually didn't win an all Ireland title. So most times you end in failure. You just have to decide whether you accept that you have achieved enough in that period of time, you know. 
It's a remarkable thing, John. Like I kind of talk to former players and like the big medal uh, cabinets and trophies that have won over the years. So, but, like I've always kind of said it, like to keep coming back year after year, winning the trophies, the Armagh titles, the Ulster titles, like self motivation to keep getting the teams prodded out, managers, players. Like it, it, it takes a lot of time, but just to have that grow to go back year after year to be consistently brilliant, John. That's an achievement in itself. Yeah, it is. But you know. Uh... My experience as a manager has taught me that uh, motivation is intrinsic. If you're relying on your manager to motivate you, you're in a hiding or nothing because your manager can't cross that white line. Uh, and if you don't have the motivation and the desire to win matches, it doesn't matter what the manager says to you. So for me, um, uh, you know, I've, I've learned that it, it, it's, it's, it's you who gets yourself motivated. So it is. Your, your manager might create conditions for you to actually do your best, but if you're not motivated, you don't have that intrinsic motivation if you don't have the desire to do something either for yourself, for your family, or you know, for your community. Uh, well, then you kind of are never going to achieve your best potential. Like you know, you talked there about that career, and I had a, I had a good career, but I pleased with what I, like I was never the best player. Um, I, I I was always happy with my contribution by and large, you know, um, and I think I always. I got the best out of what I had, uh, but like there were so many other people who were so much better than I was. Uh, some of whom I played with, some of whom I played against, and never actually um, maybe achieved as much. And and I, you know, I, I do feel for them sometimes because the unfortunate thing is, a team game, one brilliant person can't do everything on their own. They need that great team with them. They need that team support. Um, and you know, yes, we had. It, both in Arma and across Glen, we had lots of wonderful players, uh, but equally so, we had lots of people who did a really good job uh, and, and maximised the talents that they had to the best of their ability as well. And that's that's what ultimately won us most of our, our games, you know. Mm, absolutely, and I suppose kind of remarking on some of the like titles he said when obviously four fourteen the like, Armagh titles, the eight Ulster titles, and the five All Ireland wins, and like the All Ireland wins, John, like you know, Croke Park, it's a special place to be playing, it's a special time of the year to be playing. And obviously, would have been on St Paddy's Day each year. He did win it, I suppose. You know, remarkable times, and you know, to go up the Hogan Sand Steps uh, five times, which are lads you played football with all your life, special times. It is, you know, I, I, I'm a bit sentimental about it, and I'm a bit of a traditionalist when it comes to St. Patrick's Day, and it annoys me that they, they changed that, and I, I think it takes the focus off the club scene. Now, I don't know that actually the split season is, you know, particularly beneficial to the seniors either. Depends how you, how you perceive it, but from a club perspective, there's something special about Going out on the Ireland final day on you know the patron saint day for Ireland, you know the, the, just that link is really really important. And as you say, just representing your club at any level is really really valuable, and it's something that we can be very proud of. But actually doing that in Crow Park, the home GA, was one of those rare things that that we fortunately got to do quite a bit in my career, and uh, you know uh, incredibly privileged to do that. And we never ever took it for granted. And every time we went out, we we wanted to do. The best that we could to represent our people, you know, because there was one year at a club final we could have had something in the region of forty thousand people in a, in an All Ireland club final. It was like I think it was that it was the biggest attendance at that point anyhow of an All Ireland club final and record, and that was incredible. You know, for, we have two thousand people in Cross Glen. You know, yeah. we're not coming from a big place. We have maybe at that stage maybe you know three or four hundred people who are club members. You know, this this is not a big town. And yet we were able to generate that much interest and that much support to come and watch that type of game, which is just amazing. Yeah, and I suppose what was it like to kind of go to battle with your own brother Tony, the likes of Francie Bellew, Oshie McConville, uh, all the Karen brothers. I suppose remarkable players, John, over the years, and obviously probably made you the player you were as well. Yeah, yeah. Listen, you know, we we don't look at each other as as as, as special players. People sometimes I'd say judge things like this, but we just looked ourselves as as, as teammates and friends. You know, and 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 we want to try and support each other and get the best out of each other. Like, you know, uh, we I, I think back to playing on the twenty ones, which was the case with with cross play at the time. I I think I made it. We, we won maybe five in a row. So I was sixteen or something. Uh, and like they came, the likes of 
I think it was um, Joe Fitzpatrick. He, he played wing half back for for the senior team from Cross Glen and and Frank Shields and Hugh Daly. I they came and asked my parents could we t- could they take us out for the night to go to Blaney? You know, so my first discos was with them boys. Hmm. Uh, like before we played matches on the Friday night, we used to go and play uh, pool or snooker down in, in, in Castle Blaney. So we were always together. We all sort of built that team bond together. Um, and we just looked on each other as, as teammates and, and, and friends. We never, like I never looked across the table and thought to myself, Christ, I'm playing with Oshin McConville, you know, the highest scorer in our, in our man, Ulster, and one of the, the finest footballers of his generation. Mm. Uh, that never crossed my mind. Mm. You know, I, I just seen him as a teammate. Uh, and somebody that I needed to, to help because if I thought of, if Washington plays well, we you know that type of thing. So my job that happen. Um, so yeah, yeah. Well, you know they are like, like you know, Francie Bailey was 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 special. Uh, you know there was there was players that you would never know. The the likes of there was a wee boy in the first to learn called Paddy McKeown, uh, cornerback. You know, five foot one. Uh, at that stage, he was he was he was maybe five foot one, you know, forty five kgs. He wasn't heavy. He's maybe five foot one and, and ninety five kgs. <laughs> He's a bit heavier. But, <laughs> he loved you for that. He loved you for that. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, you, you know, he would go through a wall for you. And and uh, I remember that Lawn Rangers game and and Joe Kearney. If you remember me, fella Billy, Billy, oh God, she. Uh, Billy, she, oh, Billy O'Shea. He played he played corner forward for Kerry. And uh, Joe Karen says to him, when you go out here, he says, hit him a slap. And he and he he'll not he'll not be interested in the game. So Paddy McCone went out onto the match and he hit him a thump and Billy Shea turned around and backed him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and uh, he says to Joe afterwards, You fucking tell me that I, I hit him a slap, he'll not do anything to me. He hit me a thump back and he knocked me out, you know. So uh, <laughs> but that was the type of guy he would you know, you tell Paddy to do a job and he did it to the best of his ability. Not because um, do you know, you know, and and, and when I say do him a slap, it wasn't it, it wasn't cynical, dirty type stuff. It was just to let him know he was there. But uh, he 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 in his own way was a special cornerback. Now he, the year afterwards, he left Crossmill and never and never played after that. Uh, and there was loads of guys like that you'd never heard of. And without them, we would never would have won all Ireland. You know, John Donaldson as well. He was a, he was a good one as well, John. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, listen, I could go through them all. As I say, Don Mort is the, the current chairman. He's managed the club uh, twice and won, won successes with them. He was full back. He was full forward when he needed to be full forward. He was just, he was the best factor of a ball in a full back line ever you'd seen. You know, he come driving out with a ball. Um, yeah, yeah, John Donaldson was just a colossus. Uh, and there was, I think it might actually been around, did we win something around 2007? I'm going to say six, seven. We won on a learn something around there, I think. And uh, if it wasn't for John Donson, we never would have won it. There was times we were playing our rogue and he had to carry the ball again in the Gale Force Breeze and he would do it time after time after time after time. Um, and like John, he's a curious case because John was from our part yeah. of Ross Glen, uh, but he went to primary school in Cullihanna. So he, he grew up playing football in Cullihanna. Yeah. Uh, and uh, for whatever reason, uh, you know, he, he left Cullihanna and went to um, Stabannon in Loud. Yeah. And then and came back to Cross McGlen. He, he, he met a girl married and whatever else and, and then came back to Cross McGlen uh, and played with us later in the year. Like, uh, for years he looked on thinking, I could have been part of that team and I wasn't. Yeah. And he got his chance. And I can tell you, he delivered more than ever you could ever imagine. He was just immense. You know, yeah, absolutely. I suppose John, uh, touching on to your Arma uh, county days, obviously, um, you won six also titles with them, uh, one All Ireland and one National League title. I suppose you were obviously part and parcel of that uh, 2002 All Ireland win for Arma. I suppose, and it's the 20 year anniversary uh, since that glorious uh, day for mm-hmm. Arma. And obviously, Niall McCoy has uh, wrote a, a great book since. I don't know if you have you got the chance to read it yet, but a special yeah, day for your yeah. special day for the Orchard County. Oh God, I you know it's like uh, <laughs> we 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 only have one in our Maha and I was part of that team. As I say, it's just fortunate, it was just lucky that so many good people had come together to make that happen. Uh, it was so many years in the making, John. It was like years of dedication and commitment. 
uh, and we just were fortunate to get the breakthrough for like uh, I'm thinking of my my time at Armagh and that we we won our also titles. We, we might have won two, three, four in a row or something. We just couldn't get the breakthrough. Galway beat us one year. Kerry beat us after a replay. I think Kerry beat us maybe uh, a second time, uh, uh, and then we 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 managed to to get to the Ireland final in two thousand two. It, it was incredibly special. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Mm, absolutely, I suppose. Are you impressed with this kind of current crop of Armagh footballers now that uh, Kieran McGinn is at the helm there? Can, can you, can you, do you I suppose, do you believe that this Armagh uh, team can get their hands back in an Ulster title next year? Oh, absolutely. Also, also as well, we're in the grasp and um, we've got a really, really good draw this year. Um, you're a Cavan man, are you? I am, from the we I think we cross swords up for a lot but <laughs> if, if you allow me to, to be presumptuous for a second, I think we, you know, we have, we have, Antrim and Cavan then on the goal and you're into, into an Ulster finals. That's not a bad draw, mm. you know, by comparison. You could have had uh, Donegal have a bit of rebuilding to do. Uh, you know, you have Cavan, I'm walking my way back here now, but Cavan, if you get across Antrim, you have Cavan in Cavan. Mm. And that's never going to be easy, but like you have a couple couple of key men away. You have big midfielders away at the, the Australian. That's a huge loss to Cavan. Thomas Galligan. Thomas Galligan, yeah. Uh, although you might have a few guys come back. Come back in, yeah, Mark yeah. Riley, I think he's doing another year, yeah. Is he? So, you know, there's a, there's a great chance, you know, Geisha's doing a really good job with them. Um, you can see the progression, you can see the development in them. Uh, but like, and I've said this a few times over the last few months, we, we need to be really cautious with people out there because there's this expectation that, and, uh, mm. that you know, you're now one of the best teams in the country. I haven't actually won anything, John. You know, mm -hmm. until you win something, you cannot be considered uh, potential Atlanta champions. We we are in the mix, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We just need them young fellas, a bit like the Cross McGlen team this year, to get the monkey off the back. You need to win something. You mm -hmm. need a, you need a title of some description, because then you have credibility. That's a, that's some kind of saying, yeah, yeah. Without the, without the, without the title, you don't have the credibility. And yeah. we have great potential, and we're starting to realise that potential. You can see what you know. You know, if you expect guys to go out and play well and actually starting to deliver, and that's really, really important. And um, you know, last year I think when it came to the the match against Galway, we underperformed, and yet we could have stole that match. And mm -hmm. had we stole it, that would have been monumental for Armagh. Uh, but we didn't, and uh, you know, nor did we deserve it. So, but I think we can take the, the we can take the benefits of that experience and really build on it this year. So they're going to be they're they're ones to watch. There's no doubt about it, John. I, I think. Um, I, I think we probably could be second favourites for Ulster, you know, and if the draw favourites as well at all, getting us to final, I think we could we could actually win Ulster title. And then suddenly you're in a different space. You and I could have an entirely different conversation about it then after that. But for now, uh, let them let them continue to develop and let them give them the opportunity to actually express themselves and to uh, fulfil some sort of potential before we start, you know, putting the posters up on the wall. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, John. I suppose kind of looking back, like I wouldn't say enjoy, but like with your Cross McGlen and Armagh days, did you like wouldn't say prefer playing for Cross McGlen or like did you get a bit more joy for playing for Cross McGlen than Armagh, or was it equally both as enjoyable? God, no, uh, no, I love both. Um, you know, I'm a Cross McGlen man. I'm always, I've always been a Cross McGlen man. I, 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 you know, I went to Armagh to represent my. My people and my club and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, I was never one of these guys who choose one over the other. I just I understood. Well, my understanding of it was that I was going to Armagh to represent my club and represent my family and 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 you know my parish and all that sort of stuff. I think nowadays it's, it's got to be a bit different because it's nearly as though you cannot represent your club. You're down there, Armagh, Armagh or the county is your new club. And you can't serve two masters. Like when we played for Armagh, we trained with a club. We still continue to train with a club one night a week and train with Armagh. That would be unheard of now, you know? Yeah. Uh, and for all sorts of reasons, probably good reasons. Uh, but um, it, it, it has become, I think, I, I think there's, there's a bit of a chasm between club and county. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the split season doesn't help it. Uh, I don't think Crow Park has helped it in any way mm -hmm. either. Uh, and I don't think it's helpful or healthy for the players. Um, 
because you you have to know where you come from. You have to know your ground, and if you don't have the roots, you can't develop uh, as as a player. Is what my view is. Uh, you can't you can't have this errors and graces perception about yourself just because you're playing for a county team. You know, um, and I I think the way the thing has gone is starting to create that. Uh, so uh, and you have young fellas now nearly who want to be a county footballer but actually don't want to perform for the club. Mm-hmm. And where you, you know, I always try and, where I see that evidence of that, I, I, I point them to people who have finished their county career and then go back in their club and got more out of, and have said that this, that county title has meant more to them than all the, the medals that they won at county level, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that club medal would be more important to them than all the medals won at county level. But it's too late. You know, that's all right, you know, having that conversation, saying that to you, 34 years of age and your career over. It's too late. You, you, why can't you express yourself as a club footballer and enjoy yourself as a county footballer and do both? You know, be be a representative of, of you know, Gauna and Cav and Cross and Glen and Arma Ma, you know, St Gauls and Antrim. You, you should be able to do that and do it with pride and feel as though you, you, you're allowed to do that rather than having this sort of um, as I suppose you know diversions of of sub county type thing, which I don't like. Yeah, like you feel maybe from from years gone by to years now, like present, like you feel you're you're when you when you're in the county that's it, and then your club essentially does open cabin here. You know your 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 club probably gets parked till maybe you know July August till you know club championship comes around. So do you feel that there is that bit of an imbalance? Which unless they you know if there's. I'm not sure who's advocating for the players in the midst of this. GPA isn't. GPA support the development of the split season, but like you have a you have a an a, a, a intercounty season that runs from start of November right through to let's say June, is it end of June, whatever yeah. it is. Of July, yeah. Well, and when you in July and August are downtime. This is not club time. You know, intercounty players come back to club. Ninety percent of them are not seen in July mm. and probably half of August, you know. So what you have is you have club players turned up for the club two weeks before the championship starts in September. Yeah. And uh, getting into it. And I, and I understand why they do that. It is so intensive at the minute playing inter-county football. Mm. They need downtime, all right? Yeah. But that's not the way it's it, it, it's played out. It's, you know, it's it's club season, sorry, it's, it's inter-county season to July and club season from July to November. When that's not true. It's inter-county season, it's time off, and then it's club season. So mm-hmm. you have a few players, of course, who played with the clubs and d- did all right. Other people have, you know, taken time out, and, and I respect that. I think that's important that they do. But it's a myth to think that this split season's working. It's, it's an absolute myth. Um, that's from one perspective. The other perspective is f- as, as a spectacle. Like, do you really want your top players playing in March, April, when it's raining, it's miserable, it's cold. It's the wet seasons. There, if it's not, if it's not the end of winter, it's the start of spring. Even the start of summer now is not great. You know that sort of way. Um, so uh, you're not really selling your your wares as best as you, as you could. I don't think we're getting the best out of this. So um, I'm not saying I, I have a particular solution to it, but I didn't. I, I thought we could have made what we had work a bit better than going into the split season. Mm, yeah, I suppose there's lots of kind of opinions. I suppose general question, John, like did you feel the game is a good place? Obviously, Kerry did win the All Ireland this year. Obviously, it's nice to kind of keep having the change. Maybe the Dublin dominance might start again with McCaffrey and Manu back, but it's all to look forward to. But is the game a good place to be? Oh, absolutely. I I think football's good at the minute. I I think we've we've come through a, a rocky spell for two or three years there where it became a bit too much hand pass, too much. Too much messing about, but I think last year was really positive year. I think the the kicking's coming back into a bit more. The the expressions coming back into. I think it's a bit less scripted, which is good. Uh, and the good teams look really really good. Um, and I think there's becoming a, there, there are there's a higher band of, of better teams now. You know, Dublin were way way ahead. Uh, Devon Kerry arguably are still ahead. All right, but we have. We have Gallo, we have Arma, we have Mayo, uh, you know, you have Trone, you have Donegal, you know, you have Kildare, 
maybe you know you you have teams who maybe it's starting to come. So instead of having one or two guys way ahead and then everybody in a chasing pack, I think we have a number of different layers. But but the standard is is getting better and the quality of football I think is improving. So uh, yeah, I, I'm optimistic. I think things are good. Mm, fingers crossed, John. I suppose um, if you're into a game, what uh, three or four players or even five players are you paying to watch these days? I know I, I can already name one. Who hey, read? <laughs> well, <laughs> well him, him, him and David, anyway. <laughs> oh, I well, Clifford, Clifford's, Clifford's unique. Even watching him on TV, and you know, the the, the fact that he can, you know, I'm sure he does think, but you, it's so instinctive. What he does is just special. Um, so absolutely, Clifford, Clifford, no doubt about it. I think, I think Ryan, I think Ryan's special. You know. Uh, and I think when he realizes himself how good he is, mm. and maybe you know lightens up a wee bit uh, on the field. That is, you know, as, as a fellow, he's a lovely person, um, great personality. But I think there's there's so much more we you know we can see f- from from Ray. Um, uh, you know, outside of of that, uh, you know, Rory Canavan has lit up the season here at Ulster. At club level. His dad yeah. must be good, John. I feel his parents must be been alright. <laughs> yeah, well, he, again, he has a both sides of the house, so he's alright. Um, <laughs> and uh, he, he, you know, just, just you know, that bit of spark or something about it. And the funny thing about it is it's always forwards, isn't it? Is that, you know, mm-hmm. defenders can be, can be, can be manufactured, uh, but good forwards are, are, are creative. You know, gone are the days of Seamus Minahan, where yeah. You just uber talented, you know. Um, but um, uh, you know, there there is something I I, I still like the likes of the Paddy Dorkins and the Lee Higgins, those expressive mm-hmm. attacking halfbacks who do their job both defensively and forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the the players that I would pay in to watch the forwards, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like us all, John. Last question, nice easy one. You love me for this. Best player you played with and toughest player you played against. You know what? It changes on a day-to-day basis. That's, that's right. <laughs> uh, I remember Mark and Henry Downey, and he put me in me in, in his pocket a few times. Well, certainly once. Uh, he's a uh, he he he's a, he was a tough bit of stuff. Uh, a superb defender. Uh, no mess. So you know that sort of thing. Um, um, I uh, had the displeasure in a challenge match of Mark and Mickey Linden, mm-hmm. uh, although. Uh, I'm sure if you were watching the match, you would have said I wasn't marking him because <laughs> <laughs> when Mickey went, I didn't. I was standing still, and Mickey was gone. Um, um, uh, but uh, the best player that I ever played against, in terms of who played well, uh, you know, I'm going to say Michael Donnell. Um I played against Michael Donnell at the height of his career. And he, he he was something else. Um, at that stage, you know, you had him and Park Joyce and Ja Fallon mm-hmm. and Bice that was just they were just incredible and, and naturally gifted. Just one of those just one of those sort of you know, really annoying, super talented people. You just you know, you just you had to sit back and admire, you couldn't. Yeah. Uh, and, and such a natural, likable person too. Um, so in terms of playing against, playing with you know, you know, it's it's always very hard to look past somebody like Oshin, mm. who had that who had that scoring potential, you know. But uh, you know, Steve McDonald was was equally talented, uh, and the young the young Ronan Clark, mm. uh, you know, uh, like his when he was nineteen, playing full forward in a learning team, oh, and he, he actually marked Seamus Minor. Seamus Minor marked him in that final. Mm. Uh, and he got the bath of Seamus Minor. That's something that's almost unheard of, almost unheard of, you know. Mm. Um, so that's the type of person, yeah. yeah. Brilliant stuff. Very last one. What advice kind of would you give maybe like to a young, maybe John McAtee, a future coach, player, manager, the ones to kind of make the breakthroughs was in GA, John? I would tell him to... Uh, Not worry about what everybody else says. Get your, do the best that you can do. You know, take every opportunity as a learning opportunity. Take every piece of criticism as an opportunity to learn. And um, 
do the best that you can do with the gifts that you've got uh, and be very pleased with that. Don't and not to judge yourself against others, you know, set your own standards and um, and go out and deliver against those. And, you know, there are there are always somebody that's better than you, you know, whether he's a better shooter than you, somebody else could be a better passer, somebody else could be stronger, somebody else could be bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, if you let that uh, weigh heavy on you, well, then you'll, you'll, you'll develop an inferiority complex about those type of things and you'll never deliver an, or you'll never be satisfied with what you delivered. And I think, you know, this, this is all about confidence. If, if we can finish our career confident, uh, well, then we know that we've, we've done the best that we can do. Brilliant That's stuff. me. Brilliant stuff. John McAdee, thanks a million for joining me this week. And of course, this podcast is brought to you by orgaretch.com. You can use the Jamrock podcast to get 15% off on the website. Loads of gear dropping just in time for Christmas. Mr. McAdee, you're an absolute gentleman. Thanks very much. Take care.